Howard ends, the film has undoubtedly stirred different feelings and reactions in the audience. So much so that it's almost impossible to draw up a common or most agreeable conclusion. Some found the film quite intriguing, possibly because of its intangible antagonist, which is an apocalypse caused by an ambiguous event. An ambiguity, as some of us filmmakers know, is a great factor to consider into your screenplay when trying to arouse curiosity. It keeps the audience in their seats. The back end of the audience may toss popcorn at the screen. They may reason the film has a terrible ending. I always disagree with this type of statement, simply because most of the times there is no logical reason to validate this judgment. So what I think the opposing members of the audience meant to say is that the film has a rather inconclusive ending. It did not round up the plot, nor follow a concise outline. An outline is a sensitive subject among screenwriters since some consider an outline to be a boxing in factor that results in a generic script, and that avoiding it helps create a more original script. This may be true for films like Pulp Fiction and Magnolia, however, that is not the case with this film. The outline could have been used maybe not to create the script, but refine it. The film's inconsideration of the plot and outline, rather than enhance the story, results in a confusing ending. It's almost as if the writer got tired of writing a good script midway and decided to rush it. Or the production company requested an alternative ending, which is a writer's worst nightmare. The film had one good aspect to it, and that is the interesting relationships between the characters and the articulation of those relationships. So let's see how this was achieved by taking a look at the main character's connection with each of his soon-to-be family members. The film opens up with the classic Hollywood sonogram scene. Will and his partner are sharing a special moment, holding hands and goofing around. This hints at a healthy romantic relationship, but like all relationships, there are obstacles, and in this situation, it seems to be Sam's father, which Will has to break the following news to. Good. Then you shouldn't worry about tonight either. Right. Because asking Tom Sutherland for his daughter's hands can be a walk in the park. <laughs> Would you rather tell him I'm pregnant? Funny. As Will arrives at the house, we establish the relationship he has with his soon-to-be mother-in-law, Paula. She greets him with a warm smile and hug, hinting at her approval of him. However, the interesting relationship is the one between Will and his soon-to-be father-in-law, Tom. Notice how we are introduced to their relationship. Yeah, you do. I was just about to fix myself another drink. Why don't you see if Paula can use a land in the kitchen? Um, yeah, sure. Anything I can do to help? Oh, no. You're our guest. Relax. Tom's wife dismisses Will to give the gentleman some bonding time. Notice how, though this situation is uncomfortable for both characters, there still is mutual respect. Cheers. Cheers. How are we looking at time, huh? Uh, not too long. Enjoy your scotch. The conversation continues, and every time Will tries to make conversation, there's a subtle sarcasm in Tom's voice. I think it was five, actually. Sam has the same photo on her wall. Right. He came with us. How could I forget that? Later, the characters are enjoying a delicious supper when Will brings up the fact that he and Sam are planning on moving to a different area. And how does Tom handle this? Providing assistance. I need a guarantee that <clears throat> If it doesn't work out, you can't make any claims to the money that I put down. Not the personal will. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little confused. Did Sam ask you for help? No, don't worry about any of that, Will. We've helped her brother Stephen, too. Right. You know that I'm, I'm making good money on this job, right? If memory serves, you were unemployed before you moved to Seattle. Sam no, had Sam to support both of you for a while there. Tom believes Will is incapable of providing the Sam. The character's true feelings start unveiling. I'm only asking because 
I suspect that Will moved because he thought it would be easier. Because he thought it would be more secure if he moved my daughter away from me. Moving was Sam's idea. Come on. <laughs> you know what? I doubt Let's it. Let's backtrack a little. Notice the close up shots of the frame photos of Tom and his achievements. The director intentionally uses close up shots to hint at Tom's character, principles, and values. Tom, being the typical former militant, believes a man should provide, be disciplined, and be able to protect his family physically. Will deems himself fit for Tom's daughter and feels as if Tom's opinion of him is solely biased. At this point, Will has had enough. Sam would have told me that. Early on? I think she would have told you that she wanted to move away to start her own life on her own terms with me without our father bringing down her fucking neck all hey, the time. Right. Say what you got to say. Spit it out. You know, let us know how you really feel, Will. Sorry. Get it off your chest. But just don't swear in front of my wife. As we progress in the film, the suspension and tension build. Will and Tom journey on a life and death trip to save Sam. And when they are faced with obstacles, we take note of our contrasting personalities. Matt's car, cutie. Want to show me the back seat? Yeah, I don't think so. Excuse me? What'd you say? What are you talking about? What's going on, Eliza? This piece of shit just called me a slut. What? Whoa, 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 no, 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 no. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't call you a slut. I think it's gonna fucking cost you, man. Okay, okay. Hey. Don't do that. That's my call. Shut the fuck up, old man! Hey, Pops. Come on, I know you got some cash. All right. The money's in my luggage. What are you looking at? Whoa, 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 whoa. Jesus Christ, Tom. Get back in the car, Will. Stop running and don't look back. Punk. What are the implications of their different personalities? Tom handles the situation in a much more physical manner versus Will, who tries to solve it verbally, which is impractical given the situation. This causes a bigger problem for Will, making him seem incapable of protecting Sam. You should have told me. I told you what? Told me that you had a gun. And what would you have said, Will? I mean, I'm assuming that you've never fired a firearm before. No, I haven't used a firearm, but it's not exactly a priority in my law firm, is it? You know what, Will? What if they had taken this car? Game over. It would be game over! Later, they find out that the road which they need to use is closed off by the military. Will sees no way past this unfortunate situation. However, Tom finds a way. He takes advantage of his former occupational background to gain favor with the soldier, who then lets him through. Tom is able to think fast under pressure, where Will often is stuck in a state of shock or hopelessness. Consider the scene where Will is being chased and he can't operate a firearm. How do I do it? Put the mag in the gun. Fuck! Hit the side of the button on the side. Shoot! Okay. He's got the window. Shoot! Shoot! Let's not forget the reason they're in this mess in the first place is because of Will's inexperience of harsh environments. He often doesn't spot the traps. Interestingly, Will is exposed to the darker side of the world. Later, Tom becomes heavily injured. This forces Will to grab the wheel and adapt to the harsh surroundings. Tom is the more realistic individual, and it certainly has been beneficial to their journey as it has gotten this far. Will is the more idealistic individual. Although many may side with Tom for survival, Will proves how idealism 
can be beneficial in certain situations. Take the scene where Will and Tom are accompanied by a mechanic. An incident occurs which almost forces Tom to abandon the mechanic in order to save himself and Will. However, Will puts his foot down and ultimately makes the more humane yet risky decision to save the mechanic, which pays off. At this point, Will has slightly diluted Tom's biased opinion of him. Will is adapting at a rapid pace without compromising his values. He later becomes more useful by using his connections and learning how to survive the difficult journey. Something happens later that adds the cherry on top. The film earlier alluded to the boat story. A boat which Tom owned and Will accidentally destroyed. We later uncover a surprising truth. You know that shit you gave me over the last six years? The really funny thing is you, uh, <laughs> you think it was me that was driving that boat when it crashed into the rock. Yeah, uh, Sam? <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> she was drunk. I mean, drunk as anything. I mean, we both were. And, uh, you know, when we came down in the morning, when we see the boat had sunk to the bottom of the fucking lake, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, I just thought it was the right thing to do, you know? Will proves he's sacrificing spirit. This opens up Tom's heart. For the first time, he shares a personal story with Will. They finally share an intimate and genuine moment. So how does it end? <laughs> Tom. Tom. 